Greetings from Kamehameha Lutheran Church on this 14th Sunday after Pentecost. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We continue our worship together with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin together. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy, you are forgiven, and you are loved into abundant life. Amen. your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth, that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the Hebrew Scriptures, the book of Joshua, Chapter 24, verses 1 to 2 and 14 to 18. Then jo Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Ammonites, Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will 
serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along the way, all along the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Word of hope, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is taken from the sixth chapter of Ephesians, verses 10 through 20. Be strong in the Lord and the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on the day of evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times and in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. Word of hope, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is taken from the sixth chapter of John's Gospel, verses 56 to 69. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the eat, one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? <clears throat> it is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe, and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Then Peter said to him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Word of hope, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, bless the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, that they are pleasing to you and faithful to your gospel. These things I pray in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if we take a look at our three key texts um, for this Sunday, we start out in Joshua and we have the question that is, um, choose you this day whom you shall serve, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And then we move over to Ephesians. And we have a text that talks about putting on the full armor of God. And then finally, we make our way to the gospel reading. And in the gospel reading, Jesus talks about eating my flesh and drinking my blood to eat this bread 
is to have eternal life. And this is a very difficult saying. It says that this is a hard teaching and many turn and go away. And he looks at his disciples and says, how about you? Are you leaving? And Peter says those words that are familiar to many. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. In each of these texts, we have examples of communities of people in the midst of life's struggles and difficulties uh, needing to make choices. Make choices. Will they reflect the gift of God's grace, love, mercy, forgiveness um, that has been poured out since the earliest foundations of the world, since the calling of Abram as he worshipped in the land of Ur of the Chaldeans, worshipping other gods, and was brought forth. And we see in the journey of Abram and the Israelites, this constant gift of God's grace and forgiveness poured out upon him, all the way to being fully reflected in the fullest way in Jesus, that God's love is exemplified in everything that, that, that Jesus does. So will we follow in those footsteps? Will we reflect that word out into the world? And these texts present other human beings who have gone through the struggle and challenge of being able to do that. So as I was preparing for the sermon, um, a friend of mine, Mark Jansen from seminary, he does poetry and he had sent me a bunch of poems that he's putting in a book that many have <clears throat> ties to religious themes or verses or um, scriptures, specific scriptures in the Bible. And as I was reading this one, I thought about our text for today and I want to share that with you. It's called November Kyrie. And if you don't know, the word Kyrie means Lord have mercy. You're calling on God's mercy. Mark writes, this is the hymn of all creation, of word and of many, for all that is seen and unseen, all that is made and unmade, all that will be and all that will be and is. Lord, have mercy. For warming skies, for killing the living trees, fires, new deserts, disappearing whales and frogs and bears, willful ignorance, not believing our own eyes, closing eyes and holding them shut, for coughing smokestacks and plastic bags, for strengthening hurricanes and disappearing glaciers. Christ, have mercy. For dried grass, desecrated brush, fall in November, spring in February. For dried rain, for being upside down, for abusing the garden and letting it die. Lord, have mercy. For our abuse of language, for angry words, words like hammers and sharpened sticks, unhelpful and ugly. For the snide comments, comments on comments, comments on comments on comments. For destroyed, for humiliated, for rant, for weird, for crazy, for shamed, for shut down, for all the belittling, distancing, angry, fearful, deceitful words. Christ, have mercy. For the hammer and for the anvil and guns and knives and money and not caring and wounds and sounds we should not hear and images we should not see for the dopamine hits and willful inattention and passing it all down to our defenseless children. Christ have mercy for smartphones and cheap shirts and coffee and solar cells and shoes and chickens for our love of sweatshops and child labor, police states, union busters and clergy murderers for a love of money's filthy lure. Lord, have mercy. For the humble, for the helpers, for the handsome, for the humorous, for the honorable, for the truth sayers, for the prophets, the philosophers, leaders, followers, peaceful, scientists and doctors, drummers and nurses, pioneers and perfectioners, farmers and faceless bureaucrats. For the soil and trees and the hand that moves the sun and the hand that moves the moon and the hand that moves the stars, and the clouds, and the hand that moves the pen, the pencil, the lever, the shovel, and the frown that is in time turns into a smile. Christ have mercy. All of us in the continuing hymn, this marathon in trying times and plenty times, in sickness and in health and all things, be gracious to us, O Lord, and have mercy on us all. It is his depiction of the things that, that seek to pull us away from that which gives us life, that seeks to pull us away um, from, from following who Christ has called us to be. Now, you may agree with some of those in the list and maybe not others. You may add some things to the list that you didn't see in it. It's his reflection that he looks and sees that is a pull that's in our world. And we see it in our texts. 
we start with our text from the book of Joshua. The book of Joshua, written in this Deuteronomic time. Obviously, Joshua written after the fact, looking back at the history, laying it out so the people could see the history of the people. Well, the book of Joshua falls in this Deuteronomic period, which is a reflection of the life of the people of Israel from the time they were in the Promised Land to the time they were in exile. And the book of Joshua on through in that period, what we hear is the people constantly needing to make choices and struggling with those choices. And oftentimes what we see what brought them through the promised land, God, and then moved them into exile were some of the choices they had made, choosing human rulers over God. We want a king. We want to be like the other nations. They worshiped other gods straight up that were out there. Think about the prophets of Baal and those pieces. They failed to care for the, un, for the, um, for the vulnerable in their society. These were the real struggles that they faced day in and day out. They weren't these just simple, oh, I said a bad word, oh, I did this. They were as a nation, as a community, getting caught up in the systems, these big systems that were out there in the world. The greed of, look at what this leader is doing, we're fearful, what if we don't have a king like they have, even though they had God who had taken care of them all the way through turning individuals, people, into these messianic figures, if you will, trading in the God Yahweh for the God that could be for them in that moment in the way that they were looking for. We see the struggle on a huge level with these systems that are there in Joshua. And he calls, choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people said, yes, we will too. We know what God has done for us. But when those systems are there, it's difficult. And what I mean by systems is big systems of greed, big systems of, of, um, of, uh, that, are, that are out there right now with disdain and the way we speak to one another. That's this whole big thing out there that's just everywhere, social media that pulls and tugs at us. In one of my devotions this week, uh, Merle Bruckhoff is a retired transitional ministry consultant in Kansas City, Missouri. His devotion, he writes about the Ephesians 6.10 text, and he talks about being part of a nonprofit company in which they had to decide grants that went out to people who had turned in. He said this is the one time a year when things had been very particularly tumultuous, and I remember quoting this section of Ephesians to beleaguered staff. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. You see, what had happened is any, many people who did not get awarded the grant came with venom and abuse towards the, grant, the, the grantors of the grants. It was the way of taking personalities out of the question is why he quoted this. It was not the case that people were bad or good. It was simply the situation that forces beyond us were vying for control and putting us in impossible situations. See, people were caught up in the system. It's about me. It's about me and only me. I am most important. My cause is most important. There was a loss of the sense of the larger that perhaps what you are trying for is a wonderful, amazing program. But can we have the thought that maybe there's another program that has an even bigger need or will serve a bigger purpose and is needed in this moment in time, even perhaps more than what you were looking for? Because grants, for the most part, as I understand them, is not money we should expect to get. It's money that we're hoping to get that somebody is offering out into the community. He goes on to say, it is the beginning of wisdom to see beyond personalities, to recognize that often the powers at work in this world put us in difficult places. So when these powers that are at work in the world, like selfishness and greed and a desire to speak to sane, disdain and to tear down others. So what do we do? What do we do? Ephesians comes in and gives us some wisdom in that place. Put on the whole armor of God. Now immediately someone, yeah, get on the armor of God, get out there and just uh, destroy, take on this very powerful, that's how I've heard the text presented so many times. And yet in years, as I continue to study the text, what do you notice about the armor of God? Look at all the pieces, the press plates, the girdle, um, the helmet, all of them but one is defensive. They're protective of the person. 
They're all protective. And even the one piece that's more the offensive, the sword of the spirit, it too is defensive. Swords were used as a defense as well. Many thoughts and ways of what each of the pieces has been put out there. Here's one person's thought. Let me turn and make sure I get the person's name. This is Sally Brown. She, she writes of this part. Um, Paul subversively appropriates pieces of Roman armor to speak of the defenses God has already provided. God has provided these pieces for us. They need only be taken up. Truth is the belt on which everything else depends. Righteousness, not self-righteousness, but a sense of just and right relations is a Christian life, the saving breastplates. All-terrain shoes enable us to move, proclaiming the gospel of peace. Clearly, this is no ordinary battle. The shield of faith quenches the flaming arrows of adversaries. Roman shields were often covered in water for that purpose. Salvation in Pauline's perspective, Pauline perspective is already obtained in Christ's resurrection and ascension, defends the head, the center of thought and emotion, and it protects from fear. And maybe that's the big piece. When things get difficult, we get fearful. And what is that one offensive piece? That one offensive piece is the, the sword of the spirit, which is what? Which is the word of God. And what is the word of God? We go back to verse 15. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the world, word of God. But it says whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. Peace. So many grab hold of this Ephesians text and its image and put not a gospel of peace to be going forth with, carrying with our shoes, defense, defensive elements all over us, but to go forth in an offensive matter to seek to destroy. I, I love this image that Paul puts, this constant defensive pieces, because there's so much that's coming at us in our world that's seeking to pull us away, pull us away into places of bitterness, pull us away into places that says, I will not forgive, pull us away into places that this person deserves this, and so I am going to crush them, pulls us away from self-righteousness as if we are better than everyone else, pulls us away from going after these big systemic things in the world that pull us away from being a people of God that reflect the love of God, the mercy of God, the peace of God in the world. And finally, we come to John's gospel. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them, and you will live because of me. Whoever eats this will live forever. I think there's a twofold piece. There were people who were like, and we see it in the early church, thought Jesus was talking like a cannibal, not what he was talking about. That's a difficult teaching in itself. But the other is, is he acknowledging who he is as the son of God and the people going, whoa, whoa. What they have seen in God again and again is a reflection of God's mercy and love. And it's a mercy and love and forgiveness that goes so far beyond what so many of us are willing to give. So many of our systems are based on me as number one, of fulfilling my rage, my anger, of me getting what I believe I deserve. And yet God's mercy continued to step out, to take care of the people that Joshua spoke of, having brought them out of slavery and the injustices that they were facing to freedom in the promised land. And how did the people use that freedom in a way where they turned away and they created their, their images of God. And then they went after other, other leaders and kings to be their kings, wanting individuals to be the kings, not trusting in God. And reflecting that love we wrestle with it all the time as human beings and yet joshua gives the opportunity choose you this day whom you are served when we gather for worship each week we remind ourselves just like joshua did the people pulling out and say look here is the gift of the lord who do you choose each week we are reminded in our worship service together of all that God has done for us and who God calls us to be in the world amidst all those things that Mark mentioned in his poem that you might add to the list are trying to pull us away from being that reflection of love in the world. And we come up for communion, this undeserved gift, as I mentioned last week, that offers forgiveness, life, salvation, 
that sustains us in this world. And oh, how what we do matters because people are watching. I was going to read, but the sermon's getting long, so I won't. I could read many stories of folks who have come back and talked to me or my friends who are clergy. We get to hear them sometimes when others don't of maybe something that we did as individuals that was a reflection of that love that we didn't even know had this massive effect or that the church as a whole did that had a massive reflection of God because it was about love. That we had put on our defensive armor against all the things and those defensive pieces were we gathered for worship, we prayed, we read the scriptures, we gave all these places of nourishment and strength to stand up against all that that came. And while we had that sword that we could go in and crush and destroy life, instead used that sword to bring peace, to deflect all that other stuff. We can put it back in our shield, in our, in our sheath, because what people saw bared out was peace, was love. Critical we continue to do that and be that. God's peace and blessings to you on that journey. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and for all in need. Holy God, you have the words of eternal life. Lead the church to put its trust in Jesus, the living word. Direct preachers, teachers, writers, and all the baptized in faithful speech and bold witness. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Creator God, we and all creation are sustained by your word. We pray for all who remind us of our interconnectedness with all living things. Prosper the work of conservation organizations, ELCA advocacy, and local climate justice advocates. Merciful God, receive our prayer. 
God of wisdom, as our nation navigates another election cycle, guide our leaders to act justly for the sake of the world. Bring about fruitful conversation among your people and bring about change where you see fit. Sustain all who serve on juries and all their deliberations. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of restoration, bring healing and wholeness to all who cry to you. Where pain is sharp, bring a sense of comfort and relief. Where grief runs deep, bring your tender mercy. Lord, we lift up now to you either aloud or in the silence of our hearts, all those that weigh heavy on our hearts at this time. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of new life, protect students and teachers for a new school year. Bring an end to school shootings and cycles of violence that we have seen all too often. Move us to do all that is necessary to ensure a safe future for our children. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy arms as we offer them to you together in the prayer you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, all signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Greetings and welcome to our announcements from the front room <laughs> at my house. A um, couple of announcements. Benevolence of the month. Continue with the benevolence of the month. The gathering place. Again, a place to gather for a meal to be fed, but also to be fed and nursed um, in terms of relationship, being together and time together with, with other people. If you'd like to give a little extra to that, our church is in the area, 
about every six weeks serve that, that, that meal at that time for people. Donate online or you can write a check, but have once of the month, gathering place and that those funds will go there. Um, I am on vacation this next week and so uh, I've got the next two Sundays I will be gone. You, um, so next Sunday what you will see is you will have Kevin Beebe, the new executive director up at uh, Camp Lutherwood. So it's good he's going to be here. He learned some more about what's going on up at, at Camp Lutherwood. And then the following week at this point is our assistant to the bishop, Pastor Andy Yee, uh, will be leading worship for that as well. If you have a pastoral emergency because I'm out of the office, go ahead and call the office and one of our other cluster pastors will be able to, to respond um, as needed within within the, the request that is, that is put out there. So um, so I wanted to let, let you know that. And then also that you may be getting the online worship service early next week because, or the next two weeks, because while I generally send it out on Sunday morning, I'm not going to be there. So I will probably have uh, Annette in our office go ahead and send that out when she gets it on Friday. So you'll have that way ahead of time at, at, at this point. So um, Again, mark your calendar, Saturday, uh, Sunday, September 15th, cluster, cluster worship. All our Lutheran cluster congregations in the area will worship out at the Stanwood Fairgrounds. Um, again, that's at 10 o'clock, Stanwood Fairgrounds, September 15th. And then on Saturday, September 7th, we're going to have our church picnic at, um, from 2 to 5. It's potluck over at John and Linda Leckley's house. You can get a hold of the office if you need their address. It's just down the street west of the church, not too far. Uh, he'll have his John Deere tractor out there, <laughs> at least one of them. Um, so you're invited to come and, and be a part of that. We're even going to take a group photo. Um, unfortunately, I won't be there. They'll have to show, Photoshop me in because I'm gone that, that day on some vacation time. But wish you God's peace and blessings on your week. Hope you have a fantastic week and look forward to connecting uh, when I'm back from vacation. God's peace and blessings, everyone.